In the waning months of World War II, a covert and strategically pivotal operation known as Operation Starvation quietly unfolded on the global stage. From March to August 1945, a squadron of American B-29 Super Fortress bombers embarked on an audacious mission with far-reaching consequences. Their destination, the Shimonoseki Straits, a geographic linchpin that interconnected Japan's Honshu and Kyushu Islands, serving as the lifeline for 80% of Japan's vital merchant fleet. However, their cargo was far from a conventional payload. Instead of traditional bombs, they carried a silent menace, a threat that the Japanese leadership gravely underestimated, realizing its impact only when it was too late to react. In the years leading to the Pacific War, Japan had invaded Southeast Asia to plunder its riches. And yet, unwittingly, the proud Nippon Empire failed to recognize a simple fact. Stolen wealth was utterly worthless if it couldn't be transported home. Inadvertently, the nation found itself caught in a paradox of its own making, surrounded by shallow waters and starved of essential resources, relying heavily on imports to sustain itself. Imports constituted a staggering 20% of Japan's food supply, and even a minor reduction spelled widespread scarcity. Virtually all of Japan's oil, iron, and a quarter of its coal came from overseas, leaving it dependent on foreign sources to fuel its war effort. Even domestic coal transport relied on coastal shipping. Thus, the U.S. military came up with a strategic masterpiece, a relentless gambit that exploited the island empire's vulnerability. To execute this crippling blockade, the United States embarked on mine warfare operations in October 1942. Submarines became clandestine artists, planting mines strategically, starting with the dangerous waters in the Gulf of Siam, poised to disrupt Japan's maritime lifeline. Initially, the Japanese leadership underestimated the threat of the mine blockade. But as the Allies tightened their grip on the Pacific, the sea became a treacherous adversary, with mines lurking beneath the surface. The Japanese gradually came to comprehend the menace of these submerged explosives after several ships fell victim to them. Sailing nonchalantly, under the erroneous impression that only U.S. submarines posed a threat with their flashy torpedoes, many merchant skippers and officials initially failed to suspect mines. Ships were torn apart without warning. Suddenly, they grasped the true extent of the threat posed by American-laid mines. Arguably, the blockade was a humane strategy, providing the enemy with a choice. They could shelter their vessels in port, preserving lives and infrastructure, or they could brave the perilous waters. But as history would attest, the Japanese were not yet ready to surrender. During wartime on the high seas, there's often a tendency to overlook the role of mines, inflict damage, sink ships, or deter their passage. Mines are often dubbed weapons that wait, lacking the dramatic flare of gunfire or the immediate impact of bombs. However, their lesser-known successes during World War II served as compelling evidence of their tactical and strategic significance, so much so that mines sunk more ships than Allied submarines in the war's final months. Indeed, the war in the Pacific witnessed a significant disruption of Japanese operations in Southeast Asia due to increased mining activity. The introduction of magnetic mines proved particularly disruptive, rendering ironclad ships virtually useless for cargo transport between the vital ports of Bangkok and Singapore. Consequently, reliance on smaller wooden vessels became a necessity. Acoustic mines further compounded the challenges faced by Japanese forces effectively thwarting attempts to tow larger barges laden with crucial supplies. As an alternative, supply routes through French Indochina were reluctantly adopted, but these detours only impeded the progress of the vital Siam-Burma Railroad. In 1943, the 14th Air Force, stationed in China, initiated mine-laying operations. Their efforts led to the sinking of Japanese vessels near Haiphong and marked the expansion of mining activities to the Yangtze River. Key targets included Hong Kong and Takan. By March 1945,
Japan's outer zone blockade had severely disrupted its maritime transportation. Although the submarine blockade sank numerous Japanese ships, Operation Starvation, initiated by B-29s based in Tinian, aimed to further choke off Japan's remaining ports and ultimately suppress the enemy. Operation Starvation, initiated in 1945, was a joint effort between the Army Air Force and the Navy. The mastermind behind the operation was Navy Commander Ellis A. Johnson, a former Carnegie Institute scientist who lent his expertise to the Army Air Force. What set Operation Starvation apart was its subtlety. Unlike traditional bombing campaigns that wreaked havoc on civilian infrastructure, these mines waited patiently for enemy ships to stumble upon them. The operation used B-29 Superfortress bombers, typically known for their explosive payloads. However, this time they were loaded with mines instead, equipped with delayed arming mechanisms and ship count devices, offering a multitude of combinations to confound Japanese minesweepers. The mission was clear. Disrupt Japan's maritime supply lines without the immediate spectacle of explosions. On the night of March 27, 1945, the 505th Group of the 313th Wing, 20th Air Force, executed a covert mission over Kyushu. Instead of fiery devastation, the B-29s, loaded with 1,000-pound Mark 26 mines, set out on their mission to lay mines along the Shimonoseki Strait, a crucial channel for Japanese shipping. Over the next few days, hundreds more mines joined them. It was the 313th Bombardment Wing's first mining mission, marking the beginning of Operation Starvation. The Shimonoseki Straits, through which 80% of Japan's merchant fleet passed, were a primary target, along with industrial and commercial ports like Tokyo and Nagoya in the Inland Sea. Working together on the remote island of Tinian, the Air Force and Navy turned what began as an inter-service rivalry into one of the best examples of cooperation in the Pacific War. The Navy supplied the mines and technical expertise, while the Army Air Force provided the B-29s and the crews to deliver them. Collaboration was essential to the success of not only the operation, but the entire war. Operation Starvation proved to be a tactical and strategic success. The mines immediately began to pay dividends, damaging and sinking Japanese ships. The blockade of Shimonoseki Straits effectively disrupted Japanese maritime traffic, delivering a significant blow to the country's war effort. Thus, as the tides of the war swept across the Pacific, Japan found itself in a desperate struggle for survival. Japanese naval forces, despite enduring losses, continued their efforts to navigate their ships through treacherous waters. As July turned into August, Japan's frantic efforts to counter the mining of the Shimonoseki Straits proved futile. Observers scoured the skies and waters for incoming B-29s, while minesweepers toiled from dawn to dusk. Traffic continued through the dangerous waters, despite the evident risk. While the Japanese prioritized protecting their harbors, considering them vital lifelines for food and supplies from the mainland, anti-aircraft units engaged in a fierce struggle to safeguard their harbors against mine-dropping B-29s, shooting down a few, but unable to prevent the relentless mining attacks. In the waning days of the war, B-29s continued to drop mines relentlessly, sinking ships like Mikasa-san Maru, Yoju Maru, and Kashima Maru. The situation within Japan was dire. Coal, oil, salt, and food shortages had stunted its industry. The nation's leading industrialists foresaw the inevitable conclusion and warned military leaders that millions could starve if the war persisted. The campaign unfolded in five distinct phases. The initial phase, Okinawa support, commenced with the mining of critical naval bases in Kure, Sasebo, and Hiroshima, as well as the strategic Shimonoseki Strait. These efforts aimed to hinder the Japanese Navy's movements and isolate Okinawa. Although no major Japanese ships fell victim to mines in this phase, the mighty battleship Yamato was forced out of the Inland Sea and ultimately sank during her voyage to Okinawa. Phase 2, the Industrial Center Blockade, began on May 3rd, featuring the use of unsweepable pressure mines. Its purpose was to disrupt sea communications between Japan's industrial zones, 
focusing on mining ports like Tokyo, Nagoya, Kobe Osaka, and critical shipping lanes. In this phase, 1,422 mines were deployed, leading to the sinking or damaging of numerous ships, particularly in Kobe Osaka. Phase 3 expanded the blockade to northwest Honshu ports and Kyushu, using low-frequency acoustic mines to thwart Japanese countermeasures. During May, the blockade's severity grew, and mines sank more ships than submarines, dramatically impacting Japan's merchant marine. The mining campaign remained a well-guarded secret in Japan, but inflicted significant damage on shipping and production. Ship shortages hindered industry, contributing to Japan's defeat. Phase 4 intensified the attack on Honshu and Kyushu, while Phase 5, the final phase, sealed Japan's fate with a total blockade, dropping 3,746 mines in strategic locations. The Japanese merchant fleet dwindled to a trickle, and the country's ports were littered with aerial mines. Repairing damaged ships became impossible, adding to Japan's economic woes. General Curtis LeMay was a key figure in the success of the mining campaign. He shifted the command's focus to low-altitude area attacks by night using incendiary bombs, a strategy he believed played to the strength of the B-29. This change in approach increased the effectiveness of the bombing raids and set the stage for the mining missions. The commitment and determination of General LeMay and his team, coupled with careful planning and training, allowed Operation Starvation to become a critical part of the strategy to defeat Japan. Operation Starvation's relentless mining campaign was vital in choking Japan's ability to sustain its war effort and contributed to the country's eventual surrender. Over the course of the campaign, more than 50 mining missions would be carried out, resulting in the sinking or damaging of over 1,250,000 tons of shipping in the last five months of the Pacific War. In hindsight, had Operation Starvation commenced earlier, it might have hastened Japan's surrender, potentially avoiding the devastating bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This silent campaign demonstrated the power of unconventional warfare in achieving military objectives while sparing lives and property. Still, Operation Starvation's success was as devastating as it was undeniable, with the 21st Bomber Command sinking or damaging over 600 ships. Astonishingly, this came at the cost of only 15 mine-laying B-29s lost during the operation. The narrative culminates in a staggering statistic. For every aircraft lost, 45 ships had been sunk. The naval blockade and loss of control over the seas achieved by Operation Starvation were, in essence, Japan's defeat. Not only did it achieve its immediate objectives, but it also played a role in shaping the post-war roles and missions of the Air Force. It demonstrated the potential of the B-29 as a versatile aircraft, capable of carrying out various strategic missions, and it underscored the importance of inter-service cooperation in achieving military success. This operation stood as a shining example of how different branches of the military could work together to achieve a common goal, ultimately hastening the end of World War II and paving the way for a new era of strategic thinking in the U.S. military. In the words of Lieutenant Commander Arnold S. Lott, quote, The war began in many ways and in many places, and the end, when it came, also evolved in many ways and many places. Coral Sea, Midway, Tarawa, Peleliu, Leyte. Each battle brought victory nearer, yet no battle won the war. Not at Tinian, not at Okinawa, not even at Nagasaki or Hiroshima did the war end. Defeat, when Japan admitted the fact, was a slow, creeping process, which began with the blockade of her distant sea lanes, and was completed when virtual destruction of seaborne commerce reduced her to economic, industrial, and personal starvation.